Hey, can you hear me all right, Will? Yep. Excellent. Um, well, Will, thanks for the uh, for the opening, the introductions, and the preparation for the webinar. I just want to thank everybody that's in attendance for uh, for joining us this morning, and for those that that watched the video. Um, I'm Martin Dingman from Siemens. Uh, Thirty years in process industries, working with clamp-on ultrasonic flows, in, in in various industries: water, wastewater, oil and gas, uh, chemical, food and beverage. <clears throat> so I've worked on thousands of applications. Uh, in my tenure with uh, with the company, and and what I want to present here today is is taking clamp on ultrasonic flow to to a new level of performance. And this presentation is really to show what what Siemens has done over the years. You know, they've acquired a company back in 2006, Controltron, which was a leader in industry in clamp on ultrasonic flow meters. And and over that time, they've taken that that powerful engineering strength that Siemens has combined with that technology and really enhanced it um, and, and, and brought, you know, improved accuracy, uh, performance, configurations, and, and just flexibility and, and ease of use and installation. And then that's what I wanted to cover here today. Um, you know, one of the, the things that took a while for that release, and that was probably about three years back, was uh, our first launch of the FS230 was our uh, general industries uh, meter and then in the latter few months back now we've been releasing the hydrocarbon and the clamp on uh, natural gas uh, version as well and and the one of the biggest things that really um, sets it apart now is it's it's what we call that one platform or digital platform where all of our flow technologies Coriolis magnetic and clamp on ultrasonic flow all sit on one platform that's the same hardware software programming uh, menus and feature sets so anything that comes out that's new or updated for any of the other flow technologies they all they all get it um, and, and that's and that's a huge advantage especially looking forward now that the technology is on that one platform or roadmap going forward you're going to see a lot more releases with with increased uh, performance and and really leading leading edge technology. So with that, uh, I'm gonna start getting into the presentation. Let me just get my screen here. Go over the agenda real quick. For those that may not be as familiar with clamp on ultrasonic flow, I'm just gonna do a quick introduction of principle of operation, kind of go a few configurations, what they look like out in the field, go into some of those new innovative features and benefits, industry specific applications, talk a little bit about installation tips and tricks, and then get into the selection criteria and what's really important in, in selecting a clamp on ultrasonic flow meter and making sure it's right for your application. So here we show <clears throat> basic system clamp on uh, with all your basic components. You've got your FST-30, which is your, your transmitter. Uh, that's gonna be the brains of the ultrasonic measurement along with all your HMI and your IOs. And then on the pipe, you're going to have mounting frames that mount to a pipe, stainless steel straps, uh, get that seat nice onto the pipe. You're going to have a spacer bar that's provided. So when you're programming the transmitter, it makes it easy for you. If you tell it, hey, this is the pipe material, the outside diameter, wall thickness, and it will select these, uh, provide you the spacing for those sensors. Uh, that's very important that they're spaced properly. And that spacer bar helps with that. So you're not using a tape measure. Um, and then the transducers sitting there nice and tight. Um, they're coupled to the pipe with a with a coupling compound. And then you've got your cables that go back uh, back to the transmitter. We've got an RTD on there. And in some cases, if you want improved accuracy, that RTD will actually provide um, multiple benefits. Uh, one is the ability to correct for any temperature change in the transducer block. Um, you know, other technologies, that's a fixed measurement. Uh, we, we correct for that time difference because that time difference does cause an error in the measurement. So it's very important. Um, also, in addition to that, as the um, thermal expansion and contraction of a pipe, that's going to change your cross-sectional area. So the transmitter will dynamically correct for that as well. And then in addition, we also use that temperature uh, sensor if we're doing um, you know, a standard volume or correction on our liquid hydrocarbon or gas meter. So it provides many um, many benefits that uh, overall give the meter um, the accuracy that, that you require. So the benefits, non-intrusive. You're not cutting into your existing pipeline. 
Um, you're leaving that infrastructure sound. You're not cutting the pipes or shutting the process to shut um, to do that installation. And it's flexible. You've got the ability to measure liquids or gases uh, from wine sizes from a quarter inch up to 360 inch. So a very low installation cost because the cost of the meter is not going to go up as the wine size go up. It's just going to go up, uh, you know, a small amount due to the, the amount of strapping that might be required to get onto those larger size pipes. And believe it or not, the larger the pipe, the easier they are. It's those small pipes uh, that are difficult, getting that picosecond time resolution. And with the Siemens wide beam technology and the way that we resonate the pipe with very low voltage, uh, that allows us to get down to those very low um, flows on those very small pipes down to a quarter of an inch. Uh, you don't have any pressure drop or energy loss like you would with an orifice or a Venturi or an insertion type meter. Um, and there's no moving parts to wear or foul, wear or foul. so you're not removing like a plate to clean it or, or removing a, a, a turbine to uh, to have that out for maintenance or what have you. Everything is external, um, maintains its calibration, <clears throat> and gives you a very wide turndown. So from that very low flow up to very high velocities. So real quick, what's the technology and the, and the principle of operation? Um, it's a transit time, it's a delta time. So what we're, what we're doing is we're basically measuring the pipes Across with the cross section layer of that pipe in the delta time is, is proportional to the velocity of the fluid. So, if we were flowing down a river downstream, we're going to be stepping in one direction, and then we're going to take us much longer to go against that current. That delta time is in the, um, in the measurement of the upstream and downstream, which is proportional to the velocity of fluid. So, as you can see here, we have a couple mounting uh, methods that we use. One's called reflect mount where we're reflecting um, off, the, off the far wall. Sensors are mounted on the same side of the pipe. So both sensors are transmitting and receiving. Uh, so if that pipe was full and there was no flow, you would have no delta time. The, the time difference, there wouldn't be any time difference at all. Upstream and downstream time would be the same. But as flow starts to, uh, to, to speed up, the upstream will be sped up, downstream will be slowed down. That difference in time is proportional to the velocity of the fluid. Now, reflect mount is an easy mounting method. Um, you know, you get the sensors on the same side of the pipe. It also provides um, benefits for accuracy and performance. You're in the liquid twice as long. Uh, you're able to uh, do some correction for any cross flow. Um, in some cases, you may have to go to what we call direct mount. Um, you know, here you're not in the liquid or the medium as long. You're not correcting for, for cross flow. But it gives you flexibility on maybe some applications that are a little bit more difficult or challenging. Uh, it could be an old cast iron or a ductile iron pipe with a cement liner kind of breaking away and it, it's, it's attenuating signal. And the reflect mount <clears throat> requires more signal in order to be in the liquid and being in the pipe wall twice as long. Uh, so that's where we would go in direct mount. So various different configurations to give you the performance that you need. And um, with that, just go over some of the mounting configurations that we offer as well. So, if, you know, out in the field and in general installations, I have mounting frames with stainless steel straps, um, all IP rated. You've got ladder chain mounting straps for your quick temporary measurements. So if you just want to go out and do some check measurement or you don't have a measurement on that particular line, you want to get some readings, uh, makes it easier just to go out with a with ladder chain. Um, and then even <clears throat> simplifying it more is for uh, you know other installations where we've got magnetic mounting frames that are adjustable that will work with various size transducers that you might have in your kit when you're out in the field. So that's good for your large diameter pipes. You know you don't have to put a strap or or a ladder chain around the pipe. Good temporary measurement mounting frame. And then lastly, a real robust harsh environments. Our, our hard precision sensor mounts, which would be stainless steel. So various configurations and reflect and direct mount to meet your application needs. Um, looking a little bit further into principles operation, there's your single, dual, and four path. And when we talk about single, dual, and four path, we're talking about one, two, or four sets of, of sensors or transducers on one pipe. Um, as you start getting into uh, your dual path and your four path, you can see here you, you got much more averaging off, over the cross-sectional area. Um, and that's great when you have applications where you require accuracy, 
you don't have the, the most optimal uh, upstream and downstream uh, pipe diameters. You've got obstructions upstream that are causing you know, flow profile differences and so forth. So here's a way to you know, improve that accuracy, repeatability. It also adds redundancy. So if a path was to somehow fail or somehow got disconnected, uh, you'd still have that continual reading. Um, it eliminates any error due to that asymmetrical flow profile. So you can have some pipes that are at around with limited straight run and also eliminates, eliminates cross flow. But as you can see here, um, you've got out of, out of plane elbows that can cause swirl for, for more than 40 pipe diameters. You know, we say typically we want to have 10 pipe diameters upstream, five downstream. Um, a typical clamp on ultrasonic flow meter assumes <clears throat> you're mounting the transducers in, in, the, in the right location and, and that you've got a fully developed flow profile. And here you can see uh, with single elbow, um, distorts the flow profile for a short distance before actually resuming back to fully developed. Uh, what Siemens has done, it's um, patented um, and unique to our technology, is that instead of us, instead of the transmitter always assuming that you're, you're mounted in the, in, the, in the proper location, we can actually tell the transmitter where the sensors are located and correct for flow profile upstream and downstream. So we can put in, we've got you know, five pipe diameters upstream, two downstream, we've got an expander upstream and a double elbow at a plane uh, upstream, whatever that configuration is. And that will bring in the accuracy, making the transmitter smart now, understanding, hey, this is where the sensor placement is, this is what the flow profile is gonna look like, and this is the Reynolds number correction that we're going to apply to, uh, to give you that accuracy. So you've got the flexibility of the pipe configuration menu, along with putting multiple sets of sensors on the pipe to, uh, to get that accuracy as well. So that was one of the new innovative features and benefits that I wanted to discuss. And that was, you know, we've had that in the transmitter for a while, but we've added it for the, uh, for the downstream as well. <clears throat> so now let's get into some of the new innovative features and benefits. Uh, this is a new transmitter. You know, I opened up with talking about that digital platform where all the flow meter technologies share that, that common platform, which is a benefit because you've got all the same electronics. If a new communication module comes up, they all benefit from that. Um, each of the transmitters have a uh, DSL, we call that our digital sensor link. So this is another industry uh, technology benefit where you can have that internal in the transmitter or external. And I'm gonna get into the benefits of the external on the next slide. So for your wall mount version on the top right, <clears throat> you can see here that that's a DSL internal, and that'll give you up to one or two paths. So that you can put one or two sets of sensors on one pipe uh, for measurement. The DSL external down at the bottom right, that will allow you to get up to four, four paths. And I'll show you how that's configured on the next slide. Uh, housing's an IP6667 NEMA 4X, comes with uh, approvals for FM, FMC, ATEX, and IECEX. You've got a lot of configurable I.O. channels um, that can be uh, field configured as, as passive or active and have various um, inputs and outputs along with uh, pressure inputs and temperature. You've got full graphical display backlit with 240 by 160 pixel and a universal power supply, so no longer have to order a transmitter as an AC or DC, you can wire it based on the power requirements in the field. So here I'm showing to the left, you've got the wall mount FSTR30 with an internal DSL. And you can see you've got your sensors mounted on the pipe. Now picture a configuration like this, maybe the transmitter is gonna be 50 or 100 feet away. And if you've got two, three or four sets of sensors on, the, on a pipe, well, you need the external DSL anyway. <clears throat> Just thinking back in the day when we had a four, four channel and one transmitter, you'd have to run those eight cables through conduit and what have you. Now what's nice with the DSL external on the right picture that I'm showing here, you can mount that right by the sensors um, on the pipe or on a stanchion pipe or what have you, right, right close by. Those cables can be you know a couple feet long. So if you've got a four path application, you've got eight cables, you've got maybe some pressure and temperature that's running in there. Instead of running that hundreds of feet back to a transmitter, now it's locally in the external DSL, and you've got one cable that will go back to the transmitter. Uh, many benefits there. 
Uh, one is noise immunization, um, you know, not having um, that susceptibility um, like we used to have with the, with the longer cables and maybe getting some frequencies that are coming in and causing some uh, from a variable frequency drive. But also another another feature that we've included in the transmitter is its immunization, to, immune to any external noises. So when the transmitter locks in on the frequency that it will use for the transducers, it will not not allow any of the frequencies below or above that um, to get into the transmitter. Um, so it basically narrow band tunes itself. So for those applications where you've got variable frequency drives, maybe compressor stations that used to be problematic um, are, are basically um, resolved now with, with the new transmitter. This kind of gives you a look in the inside of uh, that modular design. Um, if you look here, it's a housing painted, uh, you know, die cast aluminum. It's got a removable lid, so it makes it a little bit easier when uh, when when wall mounting it. Um, at the bottom, you've got nine cable entries, and up in the top right here, you can see the F connector tool that allows you to connect the uh, the cable. So, one thing is the FST030 is backward compatible with uh, all the um, transducers and mounting from the prior product line, which was the uh, the FUS or the FUG product family. Um, the cables are RG62 coax cable. They can be field terminated um, and cut. So that F connector tool makes it easy to get into those cable entries and to connect those uh, F connectors to the DSL. You've got a line uh, lining uh, hard foam inside, and that provides many benefits actually. One is um, temperature and uh, thermal stability internally. Also, um, you know, reduction in weight and cost of having metal components that provides some shock resistance as well um, and vibration and also for servicing. You know, go back to this picture here, <clears throat> that foam comes out without any hardware or screwdrivers required and all these modules can be popped out without any hardware. So it just makes it easier to service the transmitter as well, if so required. You've got a full HMI display with a capacitive four key keypad. Um, you got your internal DSL, and then you can see here on the bottom, the I.O. is a terminal compartment for channel one, two, three, and four. You've got a lot of available space there to, to connect all your, your, your inputs and outputs and what have you. So a lot of room and flexibility. <clears throat> Getting into some more features and benefits, the startup and service and support wizards. Um, they're standard across all the technologies. So if you've programmed the Coriolis flow meter and you've never programmed or clamp on ultrasonic flow meter. It's the same menu structure. Um, it, it'll be easier than, than not having done it before. It provides standard startup um, and support wizards that simplify that installation. It gives you the step-by-step -step and kind of guides you through all that commissioning. And also, you know, if you're on the phone with a field technician or what have you, and um, you, know, they, they, you need to have some support and they need additional information, there are some wizards that will actually guide um, guide you to gather the information that they require so that way you're not going through the menu structure um, and pulling it out piece by piece. So makes it very easy to to install out in the field and also when, when the support is required there are wizards to support and, and make that easy as well. Uh, HMI, a full graphical display, it's got that uniform look and feel. Again on that one platform what's nice here is you've got, this is showing view one you can set six custom views with six different process variables, or you can have a view with trending and graphics. So you've got six configurable views uh, that are customizable with multi-parameters, um, and it gives you all the, the different information that you need customized for your application. Uh, the sensor flash. You know, here you've got um, standard, comes with a four gigabyte standard, upgradable to 32 gigabyte. Um, but that gives you all of your traceability, certification, it's your system backup, um, simplifies startup as well. All of your startup information is stored there and backed up. So if you had uh, one application, say you, were, you needed 50 transmitters for 56 inch pipes, you were doing a, a whole retrofit on the same, same applications, but 50 different lines. You could program one transmitter remove that SD card and place it into each of the other transmitters and it will populate all the 
programming information into each of those transmitters. And then when you put their respective SD cards back in, it will uh, it will back up all the information on there. So simplify startup on, on uh, applications where it requires the same install data. USB interface, uh, here at USB 2.0, uh, micro USB. So again, giving you easy access and, and commissioning, um, service and diagnostics without disturbing communication. You know, so you've got the ability to communicate via Modbus or Heart. Um, you have analog outputs. You can interrogate the meter through the uh, micro USB port, as well as um, access the, the SD card and the data logger, all simultaneously without disrupting any communication with the transmitter. Um, and we've now got PDM connectivity, um, including access to the sensor flash as well, which we didn't have in the prior uh, legacy product. Uh, wiring, you know, I showed earlier a little uh, view of, of the access and the availability of just being able to remove the connectors um, to, to, to do all the wiring. And for those that might be familiar with the, the prior generation, it was a much more complicated uh, stack of modules that had to be removed and everything. So these were things that we realized and, and during the design phase, we're able to implement that um, to make it easier when out in the field um, and, and doing these installations. Uh, then we get into, hey, you know, industry leading technology. And this is where we get into, you know, new, new um, you know, high end 100 hertz output, um, you know, update rate on the transmitter. Um, this is allowing us now to uh, improve our accuracy, the performance, it increases that measurement cycle, uh, gives us the ability to be field calibrated out in the field. So if you were working on a liquid hydrocarbon application where you might have a small or a large volume prover, I mean, those cycles are, are, are quick. And, and a five hertz meter, which was the legacy meter, um, wouldn't be quick enough to capture um, all, of, all the flow rates to, to accurately calibrate that uh, to meet the application requirements. So uh, definitely industry leading on, on the 100 hertz, 100 hertz output, um, the horsepower of the machine, just the, the ability of, of how quick it can um, install, set up, and, and the improved accuracy. Um, and even on applications where you've got pulsations like a compressor stations, where, where every drop counts and, and, and that quick change uh, we now have the ability to see that with the 100 hertz, where we couldn't with the 5 hertz transmitter. Uh, looking at the IOs, uh, they're freely configurable. So channel one will be either a Hart 7.5 or a Modbus RTU. <clears throat> and then you've got channel two, which can be configured as an analog frequency um, alarm. Three and four also can be configured freely. And then you've got different variations for inputs. Um, as far as RTDs, we now have the ability to um, accept 100, 500, and 1,000 ohm RTDs with two, three, or four wire. Um, that prior, prior meter was limited to 1,000 and, and four wire. Enhanced diagnostics. Um, I mean, this is really where the rubber meets the road and, and, and ensuring that the measurement that you're getting is, is accurate. Um, you, you know, in our day and age now with Industry 4.0 and, and digitalization, <clears throat> data from, from the field instruments is extremely important. And we've found that, you know, a lot of data that we've been getting from a lot of field instruments were basic, uh, you know, 4 to 20, you know, a single data point coming out of these. But all the other information that resides in the transmitter that can give you uh, preventive maintenance, um, you know, health in the metering, other other variables that are going on and the one nice thing with the clamp on ultrasonic flow meters i like to call it it's a window into the process it doesn't only measure flow it measures the speed of sound of that liquid and that tells you sonic signatures that it, it can tell you if there's temperature changes if there's aeration or particulates in the line and all that information can be used to understand your process better along with the diagnostics so having the ability to see signal wave shapes to see if you have a mismatch or if there's you know, maybe something um, wrong uh, with the section of pipe that you mounted on, uh, the signal to noise ratio, um, the signal strength or the gain. Um, it gives you an assessment of the flow meter status and it gives you that detailed information about the measured medium. <clears throat> and I want to use, you know, give you an example of how our customers use our diagnostics in some critical critical applications. But um, you know, we work with one um, gas company out west 
that actually does live welding with stopple fittings on a gas pipeline. So they don't actually shut the pipeline down and purge the gas. They do it under live conditions. So they're actually expanding that pipeline, uh, you know, with welding material and, and actually going out and um, doing it live. <laughs> and, and how they're able to do that is they utilize our clamp on ultrasonic flow meter to measure the velocity of the gas. So depending on the line size, they have a specific velocity that they have to get the gas up to in order to dissipate the heat. So if the velocity is too slow, that could be hazardous. If it's too fast, that could be a poor weld. And it's the diagnostics that give them the assurance that before they start welding um, and could have a, a critical situation that gives them that, that confidence level that the, that the measurement is accurate. So that's just a great example of, of how it's used in, in a very critical application. Uh, just some additional functions. Um, the outputs can be individuals you configured for mass flow, uh, freely configured for any diagnostics that you might want to see. Uh, we've included three built-in totalizers. Um, this was something we were asked for for many years uh, with flexibility of, of being configurable for forward, reverse, or net flow. Uh, we've got independent low flow cutoffs. Uh, flow direction can be adjustable. I did mention earlier when it comes to accuracy, we've implemented a lot of things to improve that. You know, I talked about the 100 hertz. I talked about the temperature compensation in the transducer block. Um, also here, temperature or pressure compensated for expansion and contraction, which is going to change that cross-sectional area. Um, other features, alarming, uh, change logs. So anything that's changed can be logged. It's time stamped. You've got a large internal logger um, that can give you years of, of logging information. Uh, programmable limit switches um, and fully compatible with, uh, with Siemens PDM. A new software tool that will allow you to interrogate the meter, gives you the health monitoring. And, and what's nice with the health monitoring is if for someone out in the field that may not be familiar with going through the menu structure and the diagnostic, you've got that green light green, yellow, and red light indicators that will give you indication, hey, if everything's green, it's running well. If something's yellow, it's it's getting into question, and then red's going to be critical. <clears throat> but allow you to interrogate the meter without stopping any of its communication. Uh, will also allow you to upload AGA-8 um, tables. So if you've got a, a gas meter and you want to do some standard correction on your, on your flow output, you can do that as well. Um, it is compatible system requirements with Windows 10. I, I need to just update this slide. It says Windows 7 and XP, but it is compatible with Windows 10. And it also allows you to do your application sizing as well. So the tools that it gives you will allow you to put in your application information, your, your liquid, uh, your piping information, what have you. And it will give you a recommendation of what transducers should be used and what you would expect as far as performance. Uh, we've now got the addition of PDM. So PDM has more than 5,000 devices from over 200 manufacturers in its library. Uh, we now have um, the ability to access the meter and do programming through PDM. So that'll allow for easier commissioning. Um, also go in for some service and diagnostics um, and device management. And then another software tool that's new for the clamp-on product is an executable file that can run locally on your PC. And that's our simulator. We call it our LUI, our local user interface. And that duplicates the full transmitter programming menu. So for uh, you know, companies that might have a field of technicians out and, and they support those technicians when they call in, you don't have to have transmitters all over your desk. You can easily pull up that file, go through the menu with them. Um, it, it, it simplifies that support and assistance and it also helps with training. Um, you know, when we're doing training, we don't have to have a ton of equipment. We can just pull up that file uh, tell it what, what transmitter and software version, and we'll have a duplicate um, simu uh, software tool uh, able to use uh, for, for that training purposes. Uh, QR code. You know, when you're out in the field and you, you, you're having some difficulties and you may need a certificate or you might need to understand some of the diagnostics or how to install or something's just not right, you need a manual. Um, what's nice is we all have smartphones, we've got tablets. Uh, that QR code that's on the transmitter provides a ton of value. Um, you know, it's readable with, you know, with any phone, smartphone, and that provides direct access to our website, giving you all the information from setup videos, tutorials, if you need installation or operation manual, maybe you're stuck on some wiring, the certificates, 
even build data that is specific to that device, um, you could pull up in any data sheets, FAQs, and approval data. So a ton of data can be can be pulled just from that QR code when in a pinch. So just to summarize some of the, the major features, uh, the 100 hertz update uh, for improved performance, uh, that's going to improve the calibration, you know, meeting the API and AGA standards, um, being able to have field proven technology, uh, you know, working in tough applications, maybe where, you know, compressors and, and, and high pulsations where we're able to capture that in the past we weren't. Three customized uh, totalizers, uh, RTDs that can be accepted, can be 100, 500,000, two, three, or four wire. You've got the built-in SD card, uh, the service port with the sensor flash, and again, that one common platform uh, where the, we share those modules across the technology. So if you're utilizing all of the Siemens Flow products, like Coriolis, Magmeters, and, and Clamp-On right now, you'd have the ability to, you know, reduce your, your, your inventory spares and what have you. And, and the training across those products is simplified as well with the same common menu structure. Uh, and again, that's with that quick start menu. You've got the advanced diagnostics capability that give you all the preventive maintenance and assurance that you're getting an accurate measurement. Uh, flexibility with your IOs and your alarm. Um, you've got the PC simulator tool, and then you've got the ability to interrogate the meter either with PDM or the FS200 software. Uh, before I get into um, industry-specific applications, uh, Will, I just figured I'd reach out and just ask if, if there were any questions up at this point. Yes, we do have a couple here, Marty. Uh, first question is, are the same sensors used for all pipe sizes? I'm sorry, Will, if you mentioned anything, I didn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I might have been on mute. Um, first question we have here is, all, are the same sensors used for all pipe sizes? No. Uh, we've got different sensors for different pipe sizes and materials. So for steel pipes, we recommend our high precision sensors, and they're selected based on the wall thickness of the pipe. So if you had a 10 inch standard wall pipe with a 0.375 wall, we would recommend our D1 high precisions. Um, for anything other than steel, we have universal sensors which cover a range. Um, so, uh, and, and, that, and that range is selected. So the smaller to the larger pipes, um, you know, we'll be able to select our you know, various universal transducers that will cover that as well. Okay. <clears throat> that gives you a little bit more flexibility when you're out in the field. They can be used on steel as well. Um, so you won't have to go out with as many transducers, but for performance on steel pipes, we recommend our high precisions. Okay, second question here is, what is an out of round pipe? Um, anything that's non-uniform inside, um, you know, not every you know, pipe is, is perfectly, uh, is round. And, you know, one of the things I always like to say when I talk about an ultrasonic flow meter is you're buying half the flow meter. The other half is your pipe, and, and, and that's the unknown. The transmitter you can program and, and play with all day, but it's the pipe where you can have a non-uniformity inside the pipe. And uh, by measuring the outside diameter and measuring the wall thickness around it and kind of averaging that out, um, and with the multiple paths, um, you know, we can kind of correct for for some of that. So that that's really what we were getting at on the uh, at around. Okay. Next question here is: Is there an IP68 unit available? Um, currently, no. Okay. Um, scrolling down. How do you access the Louis tool? Um, the uh, the Louis software tool is an executable file on your PC. Okay. Um, second to last one we have here is: Can these units accurately measure the flow of chlorine gas? What's it, it, it dependent on that application? Um, that there, there could be some variations. Um, we'd like to know, you know, what the temperature of, of that gas is, and a couple of other things. But that that's an application. Um, maybe we could go into a little bit further um, after the call. That would be great. Okay. 
Uh, last one I have here is I've seen units that use a single transducer for all line sizes. Is there a benefit to having multiple transducers? There is. Um, and I guess we go back to that little phrase is, you know, not always one size fits all is, is best, but um, what, what, what Siemens has done is, is design the transducer um, to match the resonant, um, you know, the frequency of, of the pipe and actually utilize that pipe as, as a waveguide. So, um, you know, if you think of it like a, you know, like a musical instrument when you strum in a string or if you take a, you know, a, a piece of copper pipe and, and you kind of hit it with a piece of metal and you, you hear that tone, um, that, that's what we're, we're achieving is, that, is that, that frequency. And that, and that actually excites the pipe and gives us a very wide frequency bands. Um, we call it wide beam. So the benefits, it's, it's low voltage, plus or minus 15 volts. We, we excite the transducer that, that uses the pipe's resonant frequency and um, allows us to get what we call a wide beam and, and overcome um, things like uh, you know, temperature variations where it changes your refraction angle. Um, it uh, allows us to overcome uh, aeration and uh, particulates up to a certain percentage uh, where the other technologies that's always been used in the past is, is shear mode. It's more of like almost like if you want to consider like a pencil beam, um, and it's more it's more prone to uh, being affected by temperature and solids. So yeah, we so we've designed the transducers to to match the pipe to give you the best performance. And there's a lot of other things that are are built in there for temperature ranges and refraction angles and and how you select those transducers. So. Go ahead, Will. Oh, and we have, we actually got a couple more that came in. Um, this one says, how does ultrasonic compare to thermal mass flow meter or PIA tube for process gas flows in large ducts such as 40 to 60 inch diameters? Well, we wouldn't be able to use it like if it was a, if it was a duct, duct work, um, but for, uh, and what was the application again? The gas, was it? Yes, process gas flows. For process gas flows, so we so we can measure process gas, um, not in ducts. It would have to be, uh, you know, a, a re, you know regular round round piping. Uh, we've got some pressure requirements uh, depending on the on the material. You know, if it's steel, we'd have a minimum of 100 pounds, and that's not a a limitation on the technology. That's just physics. Um, you know, if you had plastic piping or kynar. Uh, we can measure down to uh, atmosphere and vacuum, um, so we do have some flexibility there as well. Um, I guess when you say compared to uh, you know thermal mass, um, you've got uh, you know probably more on, there in impedo tubes. It's it's all dependent. You know when you get into the gas applications, what the pressure is, what the temperatures are, and the type of material that we'd be clamping on onto, but um, Definitely clamp-on does provide some advantages over those other technologies, depending on the uh, application. Okay, uh, second to last one we got here is, will these, ac will these accurately measure flow in fiberglass pipes for solids or slurries? For fiberglass pipes, yes. We've done many fiberglass pipes, um, depending on um, that type of slurry um, and the effect. So this transmitter does not have Doppler. Um, it's strictly a transit time measurement. And um, it will not correct for any of the, of the solids that are in there. So that could provide um, some error in the actual output. Um, again, we're measuring the velocity. Um, of the fluid, and then once you start adding particulates and, and so forth in there, uh, we, you know we're unable to correct for for that area that's taken up by that by those solids. Okay, and last one I got here is you said there was not an IP. <clears throat> excuse me, you said there was not an IP68 unit available, but is there an IP68 transducers available? The transducers are IP68, yes. Not the transmitter. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. All right, great. Thanks for all the questions. Let me um, let me move over to the next. Uh, okay, great. So I want to get into some of the applications. I'm going to talk a little bit about wastewater. 
um, but then look into uh, some of the gas, hydrocarbon, um, HVAC. I mean, these are the industries that uh, you know, we've been uh, working in for, for years. And I, I talked a lot about multiple paths, um, the pipe configuration menu, and, and all the things that we've included in the transmitter, even the, the 100 hertz to increase the accuracy and, and to give you that performance. And, um, you know, I look at applications like HVAC when we're working in buildings on, on chilled water or hot water lines. Um, and we always say, you know, that they don't design the piping for flow meters because you very rarely have, like you would on a hydrocarbon pipeline, you could have, you know, 50 miles. You got plenty of straight run. So all the things that we've implemented to, to give you that improved accuracy really help in those, those tight applications where you may only have a couple feet of piping and, and you've got an elbow. So you might use you know, a dual path and the, and the pipe configuration menu, because that's the only options you have. Um, you know, you're looking at the, in, you know, in water and wastewater, everything from your influence to your effluent, to your raw sewage, to uh, your, your effluence, um, ton of applications in here where, you know, typically you've got magnetic flow meters, you've got large venturis. Uh, what's nice with a clamp on ultrasonic flow meters, if you've got an existing facility, where you don't have any um, measurement, you need it. It's easy to install um, on any of the piping, whether it's ductile iron, uh, steel, cast iron. <clears throat> uh, it's great as a, as a check measurement. So for any of the applications that we've got noted here, where there is an instrument already, you've got that ability to go over there and, and clamp right next to, to that. So it could be a, you know, a mag meter or a venturi meter or some other type of, of flow technology just to get an idea of, hey, is this meter reading accurately or not within a particular range? And then also, you might have some large applications where it's not cost effective to remove a, an old flow meter that's uh, failed in place. Um, and just and having the ability to maybe um, install a clamp on ultrasonic meter upstream of that. But um, you know, we've been working in the water wastewater industry for years. Uh, so a ton of advantages and, um, and applications where clamp on ultrasonic flow meters um, benefit. Um, look at here, uh, sewage pumping. You know, we were working with a company in the UK, is uh, Welsh Water. They had the 1,800 sewage pumping stations where they had um, some other manufacturers' magnetic flow meters that were not functioning properly. Um, but what we were able to do for them to improve their accuracy because they were using uh, data that was derived from the change in the, in the sump levels uh, to save them money without having to pull the meters out, put piping back in and time savings was um, a few hundred flow meters that ended up getting installed um, as a retrofit to, uh, to give them the accurate measurements that they required. So it's, again, that flexibility of being non-intrusive and, and being able to be installed on your existing infrastructure. Uh, you know, here's a unique application where we had a mortar covered pipe uh, with steel underneath where we chipped away at the mortar. Um, where in this particular case, they didn't want to replace the insertion ultrasonic flow meter that they had. Uh, so we did it with a clamp on on a 72 inch. Basically cut that mortar away. We were able to mount the sensors right onto the steel that gave us the sonic conductivity that we required. And again, it was an easy installation, saved the money, low cost, uh, and it was non-intrusive without having any, any additional leak points or, or valve sealing issues. Um, and then you look in the oil industry where you get into even some of the higher accuracies and, and you start getting into custody transfer and leak detection. But, you know, along a pipeline, your operational measurements, you've got tank farms and storage facilities, um, the ability to utilize diagnostics to measure the speed of sound and actually identify the products uh, where you can use it for interface detection, um, leak detection for balancing along a pipeline. Um, scraper pig detection, we've got the ability to detect when a pig is in a pipeline. That's the mechanical pig along a you know, hydrocarbon pipeline. Um, volume in, volume out. Again, you know, leak detection is a big thing in the industry now where you know, there's a lot of compliance that have to be met and being able to give a standard volume balance of what's going in and coming out and, and being able to account for that um, is extremely important. So we've got the ability to take the flow meter that I presented to you today and do a lot of other corrections in industry. So we can now take it into a liquid hydrocarbon application, provide a standard volume measurement, <clears throat> a mass measurement, um, give you API or identification of a product. And this is all done you know, externally, non-intrusively. 
um, and use it for interface detection, maybe divert that to a different tank. And also have the ability to go out and do um, field checking of, of instruments that are out in the field. Again, being non-intrusive, being able to walk around and, and gather that data, capture it um, on the internal logger and SD card and be able to evaluate that data on your PC. Um, and leak detection. Um, big thing now uh, with uh, Pipeline Hazardous Material Safety Association Part 195 is a final ruling in October for pipelines to, to make sure that they're compliant with leak detection. So we've got a complement of products ranging from temperature pressure, um, but clamp-on flow is, is very commonly used for balancing along the pipeline. Um, it's easy to install. It can be installed in some difficult situations in piping configurations. Um, and, it, and it helps them meet the requirement that's required. And the other thing too with clamp and ultrasonic flow meters is the, is the sensitivity to very low flow. So even being able to um, do valve checks, um, valve leak check, you know, mounting next to a valve and, and, and seeing if, if, you, if you're registering a flow rate. Also, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, a clamp on ultrasonic flow meter is like a window into the process you know, we're not only measuring flow, we, we can detect buildup on the inside wall if there's if there's air entrained or particulates. Um, if the medium um, is changing, you know, that product change changes the speed of sound, which is a sonic signature, uh, but giving you the ability to evaluate the performance of pigging or cleaning. So if a line is steam cleaned, uh, maybe a pipeline is pigged, being able to make measurements before and after, you're going to get some flow measurement data along with diagnostics that will let you know, you know, how well um, that process, uh, you know, clean those, those lines. And then on gas pipelines, you've got, um, you know, natural gas storage, um, you know, where for many years, a lot of that's been done with orifice metering. Um, the seasonality there where those plates either have to be swapped out there in different seasons for the different change in velocities. There's maintenance in, in cleaning those um, by putting a clamp on ultrasonic flow meter, you eliminate all that maintenance. Uh, you've got something with no moving parts um, and, and very easy to, uh, to maintain over its life cycle. Um, and then a lot of other applications too, with check metering and lost and unaccounted for is, is a big industry um, term, but um, an application where flexibility of going out along a natural gas pipeline to see where some of that lost and unaccounted for is going and being able to resolve and fix, fix that piping and infrastructure. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up with some, some installation considerations, uh, some tips and tricks, and maybe some do's and don'ts, but one of the things you wanna understand is your liquid condition, uh, you know, your, your temperature, uh, what type of, uh, is it clean, is it dirty, and if it's dirty, what, what, what's in it, and you know, what are the size of the, of the particulates? Uh, but also the pipe condition, <clears throat> we're relying on the accuracy of the inside diameter. So if, if the inside diameter is incorrect, the meter is going to be incorrect. And when you look to the left, we, you know, we had an application many years back where customers said, hey, your meter failed. And, you know, when we went to the diagnostics, we're like, no, something's wrong with your pipe. Uh, they pulled that pipe out. And as you can see on the bottom left, um, the inside diameter basically shrunk. So even if we were registering a flow rate, it would be uh, way over reading um, because it would assume that it had the full inside diameter when actually that was cut in half. Um, location for the transducers, never on the top and the bottom because you could have aeration or sediment. So you always want to be at like a 10 or two o'clock. And pipe orientation is important too, but understanding the application when mounting in those different configurations. So uh, vertical up is preferred because you'll have fully developed flow sooner than you would on a horizontal line. Most of your lines are going to be on horizontal, which are good. Vertical down is questionable, um, and, but it's all dependent on, you know, if that line is pressurized or not. And if it's not, um, you're going to get a lot of separation and failure because you always need to have a full pipe. So um, you just have to know what, what the process is and, and, and where the best location is to mount. And then the pipe configuration. Up in the top right, you can see in, in that particular location, there is no good place to mount a flow meter, but down at the bottom picture, um, you know, straight line of pipe, um, that, that's in our favor. That's going to give you a nice fully developed flow, do some of that correction for us. And where we don't have that, we've got the ability to, um, to work with the transmitter <clears throat> to improve that accuracy overall. 
Um, and selection criteria. Again, um, the clamp and ultrasonic flow meter is half your flow meter. The other half is your pipe and, and, and the liquid. Understanding the liquid, the temperature range, um, the viscosity, um, do you want to know the flow rate as well? Um, if it's pulsating, you know, time on, time off, if it's uh, single direction, bi-directional, you know, all these things have to be considered, especially when placing it on, on the line. Um, and the pipe data, you know, what's your outside diameter? What's the wall thickness? Do you have a liner? How thick is that liner? And those are all things that are going to change your transducer selection. It's going to change the cross-sectional area. It's going to change the spacing of the sensors. Um, very important. Um, there's just so much you can do with a transmitter. It's, it's, it's all in spending the time, understanding the application, finding the right location, and, and, and doing the proper installation of the transducers. And then from there, um, you know, the, the, the easier part is, is with the transmitter. So understanding the application, measuring the outside diameter, wall thickness with a thickness gauge if you have it. Those are all the things that, that should be done when, when doing an installation out in the field. Um, so real quick, just wrapping up. Um, so I'm, again, I mentioned earlier from uh, Siemens process instrumentation is kind of wrapped up. Um, my portion on clamp on ultrasonic flow, I'll get into uh, any of the questions, but just wanted to just wrap up at the end that we have a full complement of measurement solutions, uh, local support. You know, we've got uh, Gilson Engineering um, along with um, you know, Siemens personnel as well. Our applications are across all the industries, oil and gas, chemical, water, wastewater. Um, and we've got custom engineered solutions that we can bring to you, whether it's third party components or, or the breadth of our portfolio through our other uh, Siemens family. Uh, we covered the clamp on ultrasonic flow, but we've got a full line of uh, flow meters, level, pressure, temperature, positioners, weighing, and services. And I wanted to just wrap up. I know we talked earlier, um, a few were asking about PDH credits, um, but we've, we've got a new Siemens website that we put up. Um, we ask that you visit it with on-demand webinars to stay up to date on today's most important process industry topics. They're going to give you uh, free professional development hours. Um, there's the link, and these are all on-demand webinars with Siemens technical experts, and we've been continually adding to that probably on a weekly basis, if not daily. And any recommendations that you may have, um, you know, we would uh, put that up there as well. So I just want to make everybody aware of that. Um, I'm going to wrap up here and then leave it open for uh, Q&A.